the global gathering for educators and institutions is here. Anthology Together is where inspiration, connection, networking, and ed tech insight and innovation intersect into the premier event destination for the global education community. Registration is open. Go to anthologytogether.com. Three higher ed authors, 100 plus college and university presidents, dozens of actionable insights for academic leaders. Commencement, the beginning of a new era in higher education is now available on Amazon. Welcome back, everybody. It's your time to add up on the Edup Experience podcast where we make education. Oh, wait for it. You know what the rest is. Your business. You, you thought I was going to say it fast, but I didn't. Maybe you filled in the blank because you've heard me say it so many times. I say it in my sleep. In fact, again, thank you to those of you that have picked up Commencement, the Beginning of a New Era in Higher Education, a book that I co-wrote with the amazing Kate Colbert with contributions from co-founder of the Edup Experience podcast, Elvin Freitas, that is based on the first 125 presidents we interviewed on this podcast from colleges and universities and what they believe the future of higher education holds. Uh, it's over 500 pages, but there's pull quotes and it's not as uh, it's a, we call it, it's a non-academic read. It's, it's a fun read. Um, and uh, we are getting great feedback from the community that they're using it like a workbook in their sessions and strategic planning and so on. So if you uh, want to get a copy of that, we would appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your support, everybody. We're, we've already interviewed 125 more presidents, so I don't know what we're going to do with all that information. Um, and, but one thing I am going to do today is introduce um, a, a person that I've been friends with in this business for oh a long time. I look the same. He looks older. Ladies and gentlemen, he's Joe Linhart. He is the Senior ex Account Executive for Higher Ed Marketing at Advanced 360 Education. Joe, what's going on? Hey, Joe. Good to see you again. How you know, you? I'm, I'm actually, I'm saying that in jest because you look the same as you did 20 years ago. And I have significantly more gray hair and wrinkle with my face. I mean, face made for radio, truly. But you look exactly the same as I saw you the first time 20 years ago. It's this fountain of youth I've got in the backyard here in Colorado, Joe. You're missing out. Uh -huh. Huh? I'd like to j jump in one of these days if I can. Um, somebody that's going to keep us young with his energy and his conversation is my guest today. Here he is. He is Michael Sangster. He is the Chief Executive Officer of the National Association of Career Colleges. Michael, welcome to the microphone. Great to be with the two Joes today. Not quite sure what I've walked into with the sound effects and the, the banter, but I'm happy to be here. Bullseye. We don't know. Well, we're going to keep you guessing, but if you say Joe, I'm guaranteeing you somebody will respond, uh, and it may not be the same person. So we're going to keep it interesting here. Michael, let's start level set uh, for us. Um, assume that there's somebody uh, listening that has not heard of the National Association of Career Colleges. Tell us about the work that you do and how you do it. I'll, I'll assume that most of the listeners today have not heard about us because they should hear about our members. Uh, 450 members plus across Canada uh, running regulated career colleges to train what I like to say these days, the workers we need out there training cybersecurity professionals, healthcare workers, cyber uh, uh, truck drivers, every one of those day-to-day -day roles that we need to fill in our economies in Canada. Uh, our membership is spread from coast to coast in every province and up north as well. And uh, they're the ones that we should be hearing about, not the National Association. We're an advocacy and and membership driven organization to help them do what they do. They're the workhorses. They're the ones doing the hard work. Nailed it. I love that you, uh, I love that response, first of all, because it is about, it is about the members serving the students, right? Because otherwise there is no national association of career colleges without the membership. Um, but you do do important work on their behalf to advocate for the importance of the career college careers, the students, the profile of students, the needs, the services, and so on. Can you talk a little bit about how you support your membership? A, a wide array of, of different services. Interestingly enough, in, in a few provinces, we actually have built curriculum and programs that, that have been approved uh, by the provincial regulators, and our colleges teach out our own curriculums. And we do uh, exam systems for those as well, proctored exams to ensure the quality and the uh, of those of those graduates that go into work in many in one cases 
Uh, just look at Ontario. We trained 18,000 personal support workers through our programs that are amazing within the province of Ontario. And those are, those are 18,000 that, that, that enrolled and graduated during COVID. They've, wow. We've trained over 100,000 through that program over the long haul, but just during COVID, very, very interesting what we could do. So that's just one area that we support, but we do government relations work for them, media, communications, um, bringing together. I think the greatest thing that I do on a daily basis that I take more pleasure in is just getting them in a room, finding an instructor in London, Ontario, and connecting them with one in, in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And letting the two of them have a conversation about best practices for teaching learners. They might have 10 or 12 students in their class. They might have 70 or 80. But watching those two instructors get together and find out a better mousetrap. Or how to deal with a student who's got this issue. Uh, we do a lot of work with the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs in Canada. We've got colleges like Willis College and Cape Breton Career College. They're doing amazing work with veterans. And taking what they've learned and how they work with a veteran who might have PTSD or might have an issue and they've learned the best way for success is to bring a student, to bring a family member, a spouse or a child into the classroom, teach them both, and then you can get a better outcome. So there's a lot of really, really interesting stuff that I'm, that I'm pleased to be around. Epic. Joe Linhart. Yeah, Michael, it's so great to have you on here. You and I have become fast friends this last year. Obviously, I represent Advanced 360 Education, and uh, we have a partnership with you guys. And uh, we did a conference last week in Niagara Falls, which was Amazing. Niagara Falls. Yeah, and so now it's your turn to come to the States, and we're going to do a conference together next week at the CQ conference. If you guys aren't uh, that are listening aren't familiar, that's at Career Colleges and Universities. <laughs> And um, Michael, we're, we're kind of partnering up and I thought I'd give you an opportunity to talk about that partnership between NACC and CQ. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about this. So it, 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 it's funny, people are calling it the, the CQ convention. We're calling it the NAC convention. That's a bit of a joke between the two organizations, but we're having a North American summit. This is the first of many uh, where we're bringing together leaders from both sides of the border to talk about education, to talk about standards, to talk about curricula curriculum, to talk about government relations, uh, just to, to bring the skills together. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what the conversation looks like. We're bringing some great Canadians to the table, like Robert Herchevik, who's going to be one of the keynote speakers. And yes, he's Canadian. I know Americans might take credit for him from Shark Tank, but he's Canadian. And we're looking forward to that. Really? And then we're come together. Yeah, no, he's Canadian. And then we're coming together again in Montreal in the fall for an executive leadership summit that's going to bring together leaders from both sides of the border again to talk about important issues in, in higher education. So uh, this partnership, I think, is going to pay off in the long run for both, both countries and both organizations. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think you know that, well, Joe and I both, you know, cut our teeth and grew up in career education. And so we both have a strong heart for career ed and uh, the trades and the rest. And I can see just in being around you, you've kind of caught the bug and a passion for why we do this. It is interesting, I'll make this quick. As I was asking some of your, um, your partner schools there in Canada, just um, referencing my relationship with you and stuff, some of them are still learning who you are and what you're about, I noticed. And I wonder what your view is um, of your role uh, leading in ACC, how do you see that role for, for the organization? Well, there's always the day-to-day -day administration role that you can never roll out, rule out that there's an important part of that. It is making sure the, the organization gets better, grows, and has long-term continuity. Um, but to me, the most important role I probably play is cheerleader. And it's bringing together people, bringing together conversations, making sure people are at the table making sure governments put us at the table so we're part of the conversation because we're part of the workforce development uh, solution for what's going on in Canada right now. And that's why I'm proud of what we're doing with CQ because we're talking about North America as a whole in our conversation, which is important. I could see a day where we get to a standard around a certain kind of healthcare worker where a NAC graduate could go work in Houston, Texas and have that uh, certificate or diploma uh, certified in another state that'd be a wonderful place we could be at. Mm. workers could move freely but the biggest role for me is just is cheerleader it's, it's getting that excitement around what the colleges do and what our what our instructors do what our administrators do because they are truly 
Um, one of my board members told me a story one time and I loved it. He said, he talked about building family trees and what career colleges do is add branches. It gives a family an ability to create a career instead of having a job. And that gives them maybe that courage to go buy a house. And then from that, maybe that college, it, that, that gets the, the son or the daughter into college. And then maybe one of them goes to university and becomes a doctor. But because one family member took a step and a new branch started on the tree. So that's the part of the exciting part that I really, really enjoy. Oh, I should you. point out, Joe, before I forget, I was really glad you were in Niagara Falls because you did get to see the falls from the good side. Uh, the Canadian side <laughs> is a much prettier view. Uh, oh, we get the good yeah. View of the yeah, that, that's awesome. Hey, man, let me ask you really quick before we throw it back to to uh, to Joe. I, I think about the trades and the demand in this country today. When you think about auto mechanics and nurses and welders, and, and we have a real shortage uh, in a lot of these areas. And nice. because I've spent all of my life in the States, I wonder if you could talk about the demand in Canada for the same careers. Oh, it, 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 it's funny how when we get in conversations with our American partners, how similar it is, just numbers might be different, you know, and you have to imagine we're, we're a population 36, 38 million people across the whole country. And I get numbers of 50 to 60 to 80,000 truck drivers is what we need today. Mm. And some of our colleges teach that heavy equipment operators, the demand is huge. So the di interesting difference between the, the Canadian and the, and the U.S. conversation is we talk about immigration more, I think. Uh, because we spent a lot of time on immigration into our higher education system with an ability to uh, move to permanent residency and citizenship or a work permit to stay in the country. Uh, that's part of the solution of what we need to do post-COVID is to keep looking at immigration solutions that involve education, uh, recertification as well as another conversation that we're in a lot. So we've got almost the mirrored job requirements uh, that our American friends see, that your listeners are probably seeing. Mm. You, yeah, Michael, you know, um, and I know Joe agrees with this stuff that I say, but long before uh, a traditional university uh, had an adult student graduate, there were career colleges that had a parent graduate and the kids are in the audience cheering them on. I saw it for years, Joe, I know you saw it for years. And, and, uh, and now it's, it's picking up steam and that's more of the norm but back in the day as it were that would happen at career colleges right that that's where you would see the parents go back to school and their kids would be in the audience seeing mom and dad and or grandma uh you know uh, congratulations and and that's what, what 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 i think why we worked in the sector as we did and and then you fast forward now and one of the most important things that universities in general are looking at is skills training mm -hmm. and how to connect with employers to find out what those employers need so you can update your curriculum to be relevant so that that student a comes to your university and b gets a job when they get out and has some kind of roi and it's funny because i and i've said it to colleagues all across uh higher ed now and i go you know what that's what career colleges have done for years. Oh, you want to find out what an employer's need? You have to run advisory boards. That's what career colleges have done for years. So there's a model there of, of um, I don't know, skills, training, employer feedback, employer loops. And I don't think that career college sector gets enough credit for really making that into what it is. Um, it, it, it is a direct feedback loop. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really glad to hear you say that because the, the thing I've learned, I, so I come from this sector, you know, this sector only two years now, coming July 1st, um, no background and went through a recruitment process where they talked to me and I just, the more I learned, the more I looked at it, I went, man, I had no clue. I had Was it a process no or a process? Sector. Process, process or, process. or process? Either one, either okay. one. Okay, just want to check. We're good. We're good with, we're, we're good with either one. Um, whatever, it's all about us. Um, <laughs> but I knew I knew nothing about this sector and what they did. And I'd see these colleges, you drive by this Herzing College, I wonder what they, you know, okay, no idea. And then I dove in and started learning about what the work they do and that closeness to the employers. I now watch employers call me to connect to a college because they want to build a program. And they know the career college, the regulated career college, probably the province, 
uh, that, they're, that they're located in is going to work to build the curriculum with them. And that employer might put, the, it put an instructor in there to help, but I need 12 of these and I need 42 of these in the next two years. And I'm gonna need more. I had an email today that went out to one of my colleges uh, that they were connecting, looking for project managers. And this is the very specific kind of project manager they're looking for, for a big mine that's being built. And they'd connected through me to this college that, that it was a perfect fit. And I'm really interested to see what happens. So I think you're right. We're training and we're quick and we're agile and the colleges move so fast to get stuff done. And they can invest. They can buy out the building next door tomorrow and put in another two classrooms and take in another 200 students if that's the need. There's a sometimes there's a negative connotation or negative perception of career colleges or those individuals that work in career colleges um, from the greater higher education academy, which is what I hate the word academy, by the way. It's so, it sounds so, I don't know, like non-inclusive, right? The academy does this or the academy does that. So, so in the U.S., of course, and if you worked in for-profit, somehow you were less than. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things I always said when I got on this microphone is that ain't true. Um, you, you know, there, are, there there's a lot of reports about um, the career colleges doing this or doing that. And there are a lot of regulations came from the for-profits and career colleges because of bad actors, but the majority of the actors are really, really good operators, putting out very happy students. What's that like in Canada? Is it the same kind of dance that you have to do around these things in, in terms of career college versus university in value? Yeah, and, and sometimes it's around the unregulated career colleges that pop up, do things, and, and that causes the problem, the bad actors. Uh, so in Ontario, we just put together a whole new code of ethics, standards of practice to help deal with some of those situations. We can say, no, 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 our guys agree to that. If they don't do agree to that, they're out. So we're really focused on quality. Our members have always been focused on quality. Um, we've got very, very good working relationships with colleges, community colleges and universities in Canada. We partner up with some of them. We have students that can ladder up in some provinces. So I think we're That's always... We're always going to face uh, a little bit of that, some of those, uh, some of those issues. But our members just kind of put their head down and train another hundred people, right? And train another ten people to go be PSWs and change ten families' lives. And they get blinders on sometime and just kind of keep going and keep doing their thing. I worry about it. I spend a lot of time talking about it with people. Um, but I also had one comment: maybe COVID changed it a bit because the workers we're looking for right now are coming out of our institutions. Um, and we could do more in the welders, uh, in some of those kinds of areas, plumbing, electrical, as we go forward. Uh, but a lot of those workers we're looking for, digital health administrators to go work on the hospital. There's a whole new area now. We're looking for people who would be health administrators that are experts in digital. And that's a whole new area for us that we're seeing a lot of success in. And yeah, one thing, one thing's for sure, Joe, and you know this, chat GPT isn't going to fix your uh, HVAC, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Not well, that I know. I always before yet. you just guys, before Joe. I, I always question when you say Joe, you know this. Well, because he he does know it. Does he know this? That's why right. he's a smart okay. dude. Okay, I wasn't sure yet. I was just getting to know. Well, I told him to go ask Chat GPT <laughs> what it thinks first. Well, the chat the chat stuff I've got a lot to learn about. I got to confess, and uh, it's pretty amazing what it can do. So who knows? It might give you haircuts and everything else in the future. Huh? Huh? But uh, Michael, I want to talk to you quickly if I could. Um, I was running a school during COVID, and man, if I, I always knew that in career education, at Joe's point, we could pivot quickly. We were flexible. We were innovative, and I know that's what you were talking about as well mm -hmm. earlier. I, I talked to some of the school folks in Canada, and I heard sort of a mixed bag about post-COVID where they are. Some are really doing re really well, it sounded like, and others are still in recovery, and they've pivoted so hard that they're dumping real estate, you know, because they've gone online or what have you. So I wonder if you could kind of assess overall post-COVID, because it seemed tougher in Canada on some of those schools. Um, how's it going today? Well, it's been interesting. This look, um, talk about the real estate issue is a very interesting one. There, a lot of them are sitting on real estate because they've gone to online learning. Mm -hmm. uh, Ontario is a province that did not allow 
uh, very little online learning pre-COVID for career colleges. And the doors opened up and they, sorry, the doors closed, the world closed. Mm -hmm. uh, the government of Ontario sent a message go. And two weeks later, the vast majority of our colleges were teaching online, using Zoom, using Teams, figuring out LMSs and off to the races. And when you can move fast quickly as a small organization or a smaller organization, you can do really well. So now one of the interesting conversations I have with members a lot of is about real estate because students want to learn on their own time from their own location. And that's the beautiful thing about the, the career colleges and why some of them are doing very well is I always say back to school day is Tuesday. It's, it's not the Tuesday after Labor Day for us, long weekend in September. Like it could be Friday. Back to school day might be next Wednesday. And that's why I think our colleges, a lot of them are, are doing quite well. They're still rallying. Um, but getting instructors, there's all kinds of weird employment issues that we're training for that we also face too. I, I have colleges calling a lot going, I'm looking for a train in nurse. I'm looking for a PSW to train this college. Uh, that's one of the unique challenges. But the real estate one is one that who, who would have thought that I'd be sitting here talking about hosting seminars on, on real estate and how to sublet and how to get rid of space that you don't need. And they're also balancing. The interesting thing is they're struggling. They're struggling with one thing. They love having the students in the room. They oh, love yeah. that sense of community. They love getting together and having a barbecue and having a, a mm -hmm. festival dinner, or some of them call them, where they bring the food together of all the nations of the students that are there. And they're struggling missing that. And I talked to, I was at a meeting in Moncton. I was talking to one of our college managers out there at Eastern College. And she said, I miss the kids here. I miss, I miss the 38-year-old single mom that's just pumped to be here because she's going to change her kids' lives. Yeah. And it's interesting to watch that because they're trying to figure out how to keep a sense of community. Their premier ed tech event is right around the corner. Epic. Anthology Together is the destination for visionaries, educators, and learners ready to unleash the power of education technology. Ed Up will be on site for the thought provoking keynotes, peer driven discussions, and unparalleled networking opportunities. We guarantee you will leave inspired and connected. You don't want to miss it. Book your tickets to Nashville for AT23, July 17th to July 20th. Register today at anthologytogether.com. You know that the world of higher education is experiencing evolutions and revolutions. You want to be part of the progress. Commencement, the beginning of a new era in higher education with insights from more than 100 college and university presidents will show you how. Get your copy of Commencement, the Beginning of a New Era in Higher Education now on Amazon right away. We think you're going to love it. It's a a amazing. Well, you have to understand, for those of us, I was always in admissions my whole, most of my career. And the value of the sales process is that hands-on nature. And when you're doing a tour of a campus, you know, you love to go into a lab where they're working on cars or whatever they're doing and say, can you see yourself? in this environment and you, let yes. them it, and you let them touch it and man they get so excited i mean it's it's kind of uh it's kind of game over at that point because they can really uh, see themselves in that in that work environment and, let and me ask you earlier you talked earlier about the grad ceremonies mm -hmm. watching somebody in their mid-40s graduate who never thought they would go and they've got their their spouse their kids and these, these graduation ceremonies, I won't, if I get there, I go, they're fantastic. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> oh, my goodness. George you're, you're W good. there. Joe, Joe's <laughs> active. I'm, I'm waiting to see if he pulls a Canadian politician in here at some point. I you know, I, I didn't prepare that well, but uh, <laughs> for next time, I will. <laughs> hey, Michael, really quick, let me ask you, um, one of the things I'm noticing that is changing a lot, and I also teach at the higher le ed level, so I teach at the University of Arizona, and uh, it's exciting because it keeps me in the game, and I learn the other side as well from a faculty perspective. One of the things we're experiencing is a mindset uh, shift with students in the States where two things, in my view, are happening. Number one, students um, are not in to borrowing money for tuition. So they're anti-financial aid here. Um, and number two, and you're seeing now big companies announcing that you don't need a college degree to work at those companies. And so now you have this idea that 
I don't need college. I don't need, I can go figure this out on my own and be in demand. And I just wonder, do you see any of that mindset shift in Canada? Uh, absolutely. The one I was in an interesting conversation with some, some administrators, gov uh, government administrators a couple of weeks ago, and they're concerned of that study at home attitude or that uh, Google. I'm going to go learn from Google. I'm going to go learn from Amazon. Uh, and they're really getting this one province, I, which I, I won't say where I was, but they're working towards a, a promotion campaign for the career college sector because they see that six month program is where these students need to go, get the skills and get to work. But they're worried they won't quite get the skills on their own doing their own thing and trying to put together a bunch of little things they go learn. Uh, so we're seeing the same kind of thing. Universities have a role. Community colleges have a role. And we bring, believe strongly that regulated career colleges have a role. Absolutely. You know what's what's interesting about what you just said, Joe, too, and I, this came up for me yesterday or day before I was talking to somebody about this. And at what point did we did we and I say students in general decide that taking out loans for education isn't reasonable? We go buy a car or a house or I mean, you do layaway for a TV. I mean, you know, at some point you are taking out loans to buy things. Did, did even during the commoditization of higher education, that it's a commodity, if something's a commodity, then you, if you want it, you do take out a loan somehow in it, it, it's competitiveness went up. And then at some point, everybody decided they weren't going to take out any money to get it and that it should be provided free. Like it's, or, or, or you know what I mean? Like, how did that happen? When did this happen? Yeah. You asking me, uh, anybody, anybody yeah. that knows the answer. Yeah, I don't know the answer, except I know that the gener it's been a generational switch. You know, it seems to be, you know, with that millennial generation down to Z, you know, has had that mindset shift. And politically, that's happening, too, you know, where and, and I just question that it doesn't matter what you believe. You know, are we heading more towards now? It's a birthright to have health care for free. It's a, it's a birthright to have a house for free. I don't know where this is heading. Right. Um, but it certainly seems to have started with the younger generation. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. We saw something, uh, a lot of governments funding healthcare worker training during COVID. And now that some of those programs are coming to an end, the students are starting to slow down. Well, I don't know, I don't know. So we're seeing some of the same kinds of things. We just announced last week a new partnership with a group called Windmill Microlending. And they're a very interesting not-for-profit here in Canada, but they work with landed immigrants and set them up with $15,000 guaranteed loans, which is really more of a line of credit because they can go back and get more against that forever. But it's for funding of housing and daycare and those other expenses mm. that are so crucial for somebody taking a second shot at a career at 35 or 40. They might not be able to afford the daycare. So we're really excited to see where that partnership goes. You've got to be a little creative now is the other thing I'd say. Yeah, you know, I do. I think it. Uh, we don't want to. We don't. We don't want to not put the the spotlight on this conference too. I mean, you know, uh, career colleges in the U.S. have there were more. There's less. I'm sure that's probably true in in Canada as well. So the fact that there's a North American summit on career colleges says so much about the resurgence. I think of the sector. Is that the general feeling you think among the membership from, from Canada, Michael, that we're seeing a resurgence of the career college student who's getting training, who needs these skills right now? Absolutely, especially in the regulatory environments where we get a good working relationship between the government and the career colleges. Regulation in our sector is necessary. We just gotta get it right so we can get the students in the classroom and get them training and find that right balance. And we've got it in some provinces. So yeah, no, I'm feeling really good about it. I'm optimistic that one upside to me from COVID uh, is a newfound respect by many people about the kind of workers that career colleges train and more awareness. So when I go back to my earlier answer earlier, I'm a cheerleader, you know, and that's my job every day is to make sure uh, more and more people know about what our members do in their communities every single day, which is nice because I've had jobs where I joked around where I was a firefighter and an arsonist. So it's nice to be Outrageous. a cheerleader again. And some days you had to start fires. Some days you had to put them out. And I'm, I'm enjoying being a cheerleader and being an optimistic person every day, which I am at, at heart. Hmm. Absolutely. Go ahead, Joe. 
You know, um, I was at an international conference last week, Michael, and it's um, it's interesting to me. If you look at the data, the data will tell you that there's an enrollment cliff just ahead of us, and it's across the world, where we have less students to go and recruit, right, uh, into college, and so you have to have the foresight to say, okay, how am I going to continue to grow the school or maintain enrollment uh, numbers? And so, you know, you see in the states a lot of focus on certificate programs, right? Um, and you see, frankly, a lot of universities adopting what we've been doing in the career ed space for years, which to me is like feather in the cap. I love nailed that. it. Nailed it. Yeah. And so I wonder, I think you mentioned something about community colleges earlier. Partnerships to me is part of my vision for our, our future in this country where, you know, vocational schools, career ed schools should be partnering with universities and community colleges. Talk to me about your views on that. Well, 100%. And, when, and in some provinces, we get it right. In other provinces, we don't get it right. Uh, we've got a unique program ourselves with a, with a community college where our college is in Ontario training early childhood assistants can go ladder up to the community college and teach early childhood educators, which is the next step up, which we haven't been allowed to do in Ontario. So that's an interesting thing that we've done. We, we get a bulk of them through. And the nice thing about that system is they actually kind of graduate and go work for a couple of years because they can't afford necessarily to go to school for two years. Give them a career, give them a path, and then they can step back out and go do the ECE step. So uh, we will not uh, turn down any phone call from anybody who wants to talk about partnering between the different layers. We've all got a role to play. And there's nobody who's the bottom rung or the middle rung or the top rung. It's just different training. It's different jobs. It's different roles. So uh, we've got a perfect example of the province of Newfoundland, Labrador. I highly recommend that any of your listeners, if you ever want a great vacation, Newfoundland and Labrador is one of the most unique places you'd ever be. I encourage you to pull up a map and take a look at this province in the Atlantic Ocean, a little island. And I joke, I've spent a lot of time there over the last 10 years. Um, I like to say that they're the mainland, we're the island, because they got life figured out. But there, the career college is the community college of called the College of the North and Memorial University. Just work together. They just work together and they figure it out. And they go, you do that, we'll do that. Let's put this into that. And they all get along. And that's Excellent. the kind of the environment because the learners don't care. The learners just want to go learn and the employers don't care. They just want the skills trained. Hmm. That's a good point, right? Um, they, the student doesn't care. They want to learn. The employer doesn't care. They want to hire. It's up to us to fill us, the career colleges, fill the gap. They fill the gap with good training. The training can get better and it can become more robust if you partner, if yep. you're willing to partner. And, and isn't that true for any university right now who's willing to take on partners? Um, some, somehow uh, you don't know you need somebody who's trained to do career college until you go and ask that somebody comes to fix something at your house. And you can't find anybody. I mean, I, and I keep get bringing this as an example on these podcasts because it's true. Because if you try to go find a contractor or somebody to do this work or come fix your electricity or your HVAC, or it is hard to find people that can come out. You have an emergency? Too bad. So does everybody else. So it'll be two weeks. Same and, problem in Canada, guys. Yeah. Right. I mean, these are really important careers. Job. Yep. And, and they pay well. And I think that's what COVID maybe had. I think there was an awareness now that you can make over a hundred thousand dollars driving a truck. And it's not about lifestyle. So I had an interesting conversation with a gentleman from New Brunswick who left his job, the iconic Tim Hortons coffee shop. You guys, some of you will know Tim Hortons. Oh coffee. yeah. Tim Hortons. Yeah. You come to Canada. You, the, the joke is you just, just go from Tim's to Tim's to Tim's. I like your style, dude. Bar. And it's, and he was working there and he thought he'd make 35,000, 40,000 dollars for the rest of his year. And a buddy said, why don't you take this program and become a truck driver in 12 weeks? And he did some training and boom, him and his, his spouse were traveling around North America. He's making $140,000 a year. He's learned how to run his own business, which the college taught him how to do, not just be a driver. Uh, and he's in Texas and then he's in Florida and then he's in California. And he picks his route because there's such a demand for trucking. Like that's an amazing story. And that again, back to the example my friend gave on the board, uh, that's a new family tree. It's a new branch. It's a new chance for that family to step up a ladder. And he's got a kid that might do better now because he's done that job. Love, I love being a part of all this. You can see 
the, the enthusiasm I have for it because they really do change families' lives. Yeah, you're totally right. You'll see so many. Keep going to those graduations, Michael, because it is heartwarming um, beyond any income that we make in this business. It's um, it's kind of an advocation, really, for those of us who have been in the business a long time and yep. um, to see their families so proud of them. I often used to say to orientation folks, you know, um, that were coming to work at one of my schools, we serve the underserved. We, we often serve the forgotten. And uh, yeah, I know Joe's background. I know some of the schools that he has led and uh, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. It is incredible when it works right, there's nothing better. Sure, are there times when it goes wrong in any industry? Okay. Absolutely. So I just wanted to thank you for what NACC is doing, what CQ is doing. They're shining a light on vocational and, yep. and And it is a need and it is a profound impact these schools make on these families and uh, these individuals. So thanks well, for all you're doing, man. I appreciate we, you. We, we do some advocacy and cheerleading and I'll, and I'll, I'll wrap that with, the, it's the colleges that do it. And as you said, go to the graduations, go, go walk around one of these colleges and, and watch one of these instructors teaching online now and trying to keep that class engaged and driving them forward and the excitement they still have towards what they're doing. Uh, it, it's hard not to become a cheerleader and want to be a big part of what they're doing. Yeah. Mike, we like to end these episodes with the same two questions of every guest. We want to, well, one's not a question. I got to change that whole thing. Uh, but uh, what do you want to say? Um, what do you want to say about the National Association of Career Colleges that we haven't talked about? Anything at all that you just go, you know what? I wish Joe Linhart would have asked me that. And so I want to get it out here. Um, and then two, what do you see for the future of, of uh, career college education? Well, first off, I'd say we're over 135 year old organization. That's a, that'll be a surprise for you. Amazing. I've got, I've got colleges that are that old that are our members across this country that have been training people that long. Uh, and people don't understand the length of time. The Saskatoon Business College has trained, trained generations of family members uh, in the province of Saskatchewan. And it, it, it's people don't understand the, the, the width, the breadth, the depth of these colleges and what they do. Uh, so that would be the one. And then the future, I, I'm just nothing but optimistic because I see the professionalism uh, that our colleges bring to the table. Um, I, I'm very excited about where things are going. Um, I think there'll be more creative solutions as we go forward. I think there'll be more partnerships. There's more people who want to participate. Uh, Joseph, you, the one thing I'd love to see in the industry, I'm two years in. You were there last week maybe a few less conferences because I can't be everywhere and be engaged in these conversations, but really, really? my LinkedIn feed is full and you've got a listening audience here of people in the sector. It, it's just full of conferences week after week after week that I'd love to be a part of, but it's hard to do it when you actually got to go do a bunch of this stuff, isn't it? Yes. I'd love to see a few organizations come together and maybe combine a few of these so we can get some voices together. Cause we that's need to what I'm proud about, about what we're doing with CQ because we're saying, Let's do it together and let's make it more valuable because I think our members can learn from Americans and vice versa. 100%. And I would like to finish on, if I can be optimistic, I'd like to point out that the uh, we're the night after, we're recording this the night after the Stanley Cup Finals. The majority of those players on Vegas were Canadian. Just <laughs> want to point that out. They just wanted warm weather. There's yeah. there's uh, there's opinion and then there's fact and there's Michael brings fact. the facts. There is uh, a fact here. that the majority of those players were Canadians on Vegas and Florida. Well, that's a, a that's a good fact. Another fact uh, is that uh, you're doing amazing work uh, for the National Association of Career Colleges and your membership. Uh, this is an incredible moment that where you're having a North American summit on career colleges and the resurgence of the industry that needs to take place uh, for those for anyone that's ever worked in the career college sector you never let that passion go you're either in it or if you've transitioned it's always in you it's always there especially if you learned how to be flexible you, you, these are very valuable people and very valuable models we can learn a lot from somebody that's learned a lot from them is my guest co-host you know him, you love him. He's Joe Linhart. He's Senior Account Executive at 
for higher ed marketing at 8360 ed what's going on joe thanks for being here appreciate you sorry i talk so much no you're you're great i had to make a comment to michael really quick don't forget jamal murray of the denver nuggets he's from ontario as well a lot of canadians, really? in, the, lot of canadians in the nba now too and a lot of Canadians just, winning championships, apparently, right now. And if we're going to finish on sports, you really got to watch a CFL game. You can catch it on American television. Watch a Canadian football league game sometime. You'll find it very entertaining. Ah. It's a different well, game, but you'll find it fun. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week, Michael. I know we're going to talk tomorrow as well, but I wanted to just let the audience know as well. You know, if you have any marketing needs at all, um, Advanced 360 Education is a full service marketing company and our claim to fame, our secret sauce is really our first party data. And so we'd love to talk to you about that sometime. You can visit a360education.com for information. Ep, ep, epic. Love that, Joe. Thank you. And make sure that the two of you guys, if I can't, uh, if I, if you don't see me, make sure you have one huge Canadian beer Cheers uh, for me. Uh, and uh, talk about your experience on this podcast with my guest today, your guest today. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. He is Michael Sangster. He is CEO for the National Association of Career Colleges. Michael, did you have a good time here on the podcast today? Loved it. Really enjoyed it. Anytime, guys. Happy to come back and introduce you to some of our members that are really doing the work on the ground every day. And looking forward to Kansas City next week and, and being down there and we're going to be hosting a little party. This, this episode, I'm sure, might not get out before that party, but we're having the world needs more Canada party. We're going to have a good time. We're going to show Kansas City what Canadians do. I love that, ladies and gentlemen. You better be ready. And I'm what ready. you've done is you've just ed upped. Now, what can you expect at AT23? That's Anthology Together 2023. Well, expect to look into the future, expand your network, and explore solutions with experts. You're going to hear from industry thought leaders. You're going to connect with countless opportunities and people representing different institutions across the globe. You might even get to test out some new tech and help drive future anthology technology. That's right, Anthology Together. Registration is open at anthologytogether.com. It's time to level up. The beginning of a new era in higher education begins with you. Order your copy of Commencement. The Beginning of a New Era in Higher Education by Kate Colbert, Dr. Joseph Lucille, with contributions by Elvin Freitas. It's Higher Education's must-read book of 2022. Discover how you can seize the moment to change higher education forever. Commencement, The Beginning of a New Era in Higher Education, now available on Amazon. For bulk orders, contact Kate, Joe, or Elvin. 